Hi everyone. Uh, I hope I am audible. Uh, someone can confirm by raising their hand or maybe some smiley. Dawal Sahir, can you hear me, guys? Thanks, Sai, for confirming. So, guys, uh, we'll be starting shortly. The previous link uh, got disconnected for some reason, and with due permission, and um, last time many people were left out, so I have requested. I um, mean. so the session will be recorded for the benefit of all those who couldn't attend uh, couldn't attend for some reason of timing or maybe anything or as we experienced several glitches last time so keeping that in mind for greater good our uh, speakers have uh, agreed to recording this session but again uh, once so, uh, anything uh, to be discussed today will be purely uh, educational and then there won't be any buy sell recommendations if any names are taken during the uh, discussion welcome sajal sir hey please say hey, good good morning or, or good afternoon rather for you and and hello friends um, and maybe good evening for some few people i know joining from um, places like sydney and elsewhere in australia so so yeah warm welcome and hello everyone thank you sir so we are waiting for uh, tushar sir he'll be joining shortly i am sharing the link yeah sure sure uh, sajal sir i have shared the link in the meantime may i request you like uh, what we discussed last time so if we can briefly discuss because i got many request and you must have also got the request because the last session was not recorded so 2 3 minutes of i mean if you would like to y- yeah sure i mean uh, so definitely exactly as you explained prince um, the session last session went well and um, we we didn't record it and that was a a regret to be honest with you so i mean we we are recording this session so um, i'll take this opportunity to just put a, a disclaimer up front that whatever um, we are discussing is just to just to illustrate the examples or the thesis that um, we have it could be a, a, a negative view contrarian view or or optimistic view um, none of this is is any sort of recommendation to to sort of trade uh, or transact in, in the underlying security uh, it's it's solely solely your responsibility to do the hard work due diligence rather than you know blindly um, do a copy paste exercise um, so that that would be my disclaimer up front and uh, i think uh, uh, in the interest of the time while we are waiting for others to join maybe as we are recording this session i think there is no harm in maybe taking um, some uh, questions i see safir bhai is joined as well um, hello safir bhai uh, i think we should make um, him um, he is not allowed to be a listener so he should be he should be a speaker yes yeah, sir uh, i have uh, sent him the request sir. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much. I was very interested in hearing you, so I couldn't resist. And uh, it's wonderful that I have joined to hear you. Alright, welcome, welcome, Safir. My pleasure is all ours. Um, and and others as well. I mean, if you have any sort of, uh, especially the contrarian view or the negative view, uh, do chime in and and help us um, all. You know, do some um, open the bonnet and you know just check the wirings again. So. Uh, please feel free to challenge any views um, uh, this is an open forum um, bring all the perspectives especially the contrarian or the negative ones hi tushar yeah hi hi everyone uh, am i audible ah uh, yeah, yeah. loud loud and clear you, you, you're sounding less optimistic for some reason and uh, it's a uh, afternoon uh, bang in the afternoon i was having a nice peaceful sleep i just getting my battery charged up frankly uh so sajal bhai you know uh, uh, passion is not a problem here i'll pick up give me some 60 seconds <laughs> sure 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 yeah so a uh, uh, prince i think i think we can we can crack on then Yes, sir. Sir, uh, I would request if we can brief about last session because I got many requests on that, and then we will move on to the questions we have uh, with us, and then we'll be taking speakers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the the key takeaway from the last session was what um, 
Aditya mentioned about the annual reports, right? So uh, he said that the first 20-25 pages of the annual reports are uh, kind of all marketing jargon and um, they are kind of outsourced. The way to read the annual report is if you read it from the bottom. And uh, the problem with annual reports these days is because of the statutory um, clauses and, and, and um, requirements um, by law. Uh, the reports are getting longer and longer. I mean, in olden days, it used to be 30, 40 pages and you are done with the annual report. So pretty much just looking at the balance sheet, uh, management commentary, cash flows, um, that type of thing. Uh, now that, you know, you get, it's, it's common if you pick any large cap uh, pharma, 300 pages is kind of the norm these days. Um, so that's, that's a challenge, but start from the bottom. That was one of the key takeaways. Uh, the other key takeaway was that um, do not consider these um, large um, listed players, players like um, Lupin or Robindo, uh, wherever they are getting the majority of the cash flows, um, Zydus, majority of the cash flows are Biocon, majority of the cash flows are getting, um, they are getting from um, uh, US. Uh, don't, don't assume that to be a structural because see pharmaceutical or healthcare is a structural. Uh, but that doesn't mean that every company is structural and especially these ones. So always treat them as if you're buying a sugar or a paper or a metal stock. Um, you have to buy them at the the bottom of their cycle or near the bottom of the cycle or at least when they are below their 10-year um, mean. Whether that's the price to book or price to sales, I don't care. I I typically prefer price to book or price to sales for the simple reason that they um, they eliminate the cyclicality in the earnings. So if I'm looking at EV EBITDA or um, uh, price to earnings, uh, the earnings volatility is a factor. So if last four quarters the earnings have been uh, blockbuster, the PE will optically uh, look uh, uh, low. Uh, and likewise, the EV EBITDA would optically look low. And, and reverse is also true if the last four or five quarters, uh, especially as an example in case of many of the API companies, and there have been no earnings or earnings have um, degrown. So for that reason, the EV EBITDA or the price to earnings will not give you the, the real sort of uh, like for like comparison. So you are better off going with price to book or uh, price to sales because that is across the cycles. So for that reason, I always recommend openly um, using these two ratios rather than EV beta or price to earnings. Um, so that was another discussion we had. Um, then I think, uh, is there anything that you remember, Prince, that you want me to elaborate upon from that session? Uh, I'll come to that, sir. In the meantime, I would request your attention toward, uh, like you yesterday asked me, the operating cash flow before working capital was in single digit. Now the OCF before working capital will be in four digits this fiscal. So it took 20 years to cover this journey. So you wanted to speak on this, sir. Yeah, sure, sure. I will, I will start um, on this and I know... Um, um, Tushar Bhai will also have an opinion uh, on this. So, so here is a business where the promoter perception is is not great. Uh, it's rather on the on the low uh, end of the spectrum. And if you are on sort of WhatsApp groups or if you are um, on Twitter, if you take you know others' opinions, people will always or majority of not all majority of those opinions would be negative. And if you ask for evidence, people will say, oh, there was some collusion with some sort of, um, you know, um, player um, at such and such period or, you know, the, the, the management has um, not done this or they haven't done uh, X, Y, Z. All sorts of stories or narratives would be presented without any concrete evidence. I, I repeat, without any concrete evidence. Um, even some would say that, you know, the, the transcript was changed. Uh, so maybe uh, now you guys know what which company that I'm about to to reveal. So uh, this is this is by the way uh, Granules India, and a very reputed fund manager about two years back tweeted um, saying that you know this is granules of crap. 
um so um there is there is a very strong negative perception about this company but i'll give you a number this is a and see in indian market about 7000 odd listed stocks how many are there as a 100 bagger over 20 years not many and i'm talking about all sectors uh, from it all the way to financial services and if you split that number and then um uh, Uh, uh move down to the pharmaceutical space uh, the generics pharma that is uh, within healthcare that 100 bagger over 20 years is a is a even smaller number so of the top of my head even today i think lupin is a 100 bagger um, and then um, there are few other companies in uh, sun pharma is is definitely one uh, and few few more but not not a lot not many and granules has been a 100 bagger over the last 20 years now when i say 100 baggers uh, there is some interesting data the operating cash flow um, has been uh, way more than 100x in the last 20 years and that's the number right as i keep saying that the quality of the management over a period of time will be seen in the numbers numbers don't lie over a period numbers may be lying over one year two year but numbers don't lie over a period of 25 years or 20 years so operating cash flow is 100x and then i'll give you another number uh, sales has been 100x how many pharmaceutical companies have grown sales 100 bagger in sales alone over the 20 year period so granules india ka sales in 2000 year 2000 was um, close to 30 crores that's a number the profit after tax in year 2000 was just 2 crores that's again a number and I, and i won't be surprised from the 2 crore if this business goes to 2000 crore i repeat 2000 crores of pat it may it may not happen in the next 5 years but i can definitely see at some point in this decade that granules will hit 2000 crore profit after tax so what i'm trying to highlight is that the there is there will always be sort of you know the chatter and the narrative about um, a business but you have to do your own due diligence in terms of you know have they walked the talk in the past what sort of capital allocation they have done how they have scaled up the business those are you know the the important criteria to consider rather than you know heard on the street court and court or or you know the the shallow gossip which is you know majority of the traffic flowing into these you know whatsapp universities and you know this twitter school of economics so i mean that's my view uh, and i'm not sure what um, and to shar bhai and safir bhai if you've got any view on this business uh, please chime in sir i kon si to shar i think he got dropped so let me connect with him again and in the meantime safir sir if have any view he can share or otherwise we'll move on to next question as you say i know i don't have a view except that i generally heard that the promoter wanted to make an exit i don't know whether it is true or not yeah that that used to be um, the rumor about 2 years 18 months back safir bhai but they have um, categorically denied it on sort of um, recorded uh, so there is i think um, madhu kela also asked this question on one of the the earnings uh, call maybe four quarters back or or there about and they um, they said you know this is on record that we are not considering that option they have denied this uh, several times on media as well and i think given what they are doing today um, which they haven't done in the past the kind of actions that they are taking um, they are taking on the uh, the novel technology side the way they are embracing the new technologies i mean i think that's my perception uh, and again uh, I, i may be biased here i think that business is not r- rightly valued today so if they if they have to exit my suggestion to the management would be that they they consider that option 5 years out and not today 
Tushar Bhai, you also yeah. uh, covered this uh, company. I saw it uh, in IIC season seven. So, would like to love to uh, know your view on that also. Right. Uh, yeah. So, uh, thanks for the opportunity, uh, friends. Just one disclaimer. Uh, I will probably uh, have very reserved views on on specific stocks. Uh, you know, I generally don't comment on specific stocks in public forum, but uh, wherever possible, I will definitely add value. Yes, uh, granules is one stock that we are personally invested in. So again, that's a second disclaimer. These are uh, these views are only for educational purpose. See, one thing to really uh, note in this company, right? Uh, if you look at their top molecule, it's a commodity product, which is paracetamol. It's a thousand crore revenue business for them. Now, you know, a lot of people would perceive that as a risk. You know, a thousand crore product, uh, which is a commodity product. and uh, you know people will say that uh, the margin is not at high on the product or or you know there are a lot of players competing and uh, what is the moat in, in that product for example but i would flip that question on its head and, and i would uh, or the observation on its head and i would ask how many products are there in pharma you know any company in india that you can name off how many uh, companies have uh, one single product which is a 1000 crore revenue be it commodity be it specialty be it you know complex generic be it whatever uh, you can actually name such instances uh, you know you can count them on your fingertips maybe the the beauty is if you are actually a leader a cost leader in a commodity product you you are basically having a unpenetrable moat you know nobody can challenge you like, let's say let's take as an example uh, this is just uh, for representation let's say granules has a 20% uh, net margin in if it were only selling paracetamol right Thousand crore revenue means that maybe two hundred crore EBITDA is coming only from paracetamol. You know, if uh, another competitor decides to uh, come in and really aggressively challenge, they can actually take their margins to zero for two years. The company will suffer a lot, maybe. But do you think uh, another competitor would be able to come in and and against that four hundred crores of potential drawback? That means any other player can build a business of this size again in this space. It's very very dif- difficult for someone to build another paracetamol from scratch today, right? And and for granules, the product continues to grow at a very healthy rate even today. It's a growing product. Between the top three products, they have more than two and a half thousand crores of, uh, you know, so-called commodity products which are actually giving them more than twenty percent margins, and the numbers continue to grow. So it's an example of a very good, very successful execution by a company in what is so-called perceived commodity product. what i would see is that you know irrespective of whether the product is commodity or specialty uh, what the company is doing what are they being able to achieve in the in the space that they are competing in and whether they have a right to win a b whether they have an ability to grow and grow consistently and see whether their commentary or their outlook has been consistent and you know they have actually achieved or they have you know delivered in line with what they had guided so i would say just do one thing to anyone who is studying this company go back to the last quarter of uh, fy18 uh that's 2018 june uh, uh, may march quarter and uh, start pick uh, you know pick up the uh, the quarterly contrail of march 2018 and just read quarter by quarter what the management has commented about the business about their intention to create shareholder wealth about their intention to deleverage and reduce the promoter pledge about their intention to make the accounting practice more conservative what they have said and what they have delivered now this is something that you know uh, is there in public quarter by quarter just go through this thread and then nobody needs to tell you anything you know uh, a person who is smart enough will just read this thread and understand what they have achieved as a business the profits have had gone from 2018 from fy18 130 crore It went up to 550 crore in FY21. That's more than 4x in three years. You know, and at a time when the leaders in pharma have hardly done anything, we have one bad year. We have two quarters where they had a problem in the supply chain in paracetamol, and people are again starting to doubt the company, starting to question their capability, their ability to generate profits, and the intention. But but look at what they did in the past three years, and. i'm sure that you know companies cannot just uh, companies are on businesses are not run on excel sheet 
companies will have bad quarters they will have bad times but you need to understand whether they have the capability to come out of that granules has delivered one of the best return ratios uh, one of the best uh, cagers actually in profits in the last 10 maybe 15 years in pharma they are right there you know they would be among the top 5 6 companies in the sector so i don't think that you know for us to really try and evaluate this company in short periods makes sense what you should look at this business is on merit today where it is i think the core three molecules which people think are ranked commodity products they are delivering 30% plus uh, return on capital in that business and they have made a number of investments which should yield fruit maybe over the next 3 5 years so uh, i would agree with you know what sajid bhai said earlier that just look at what the company has done over the last 10 15 20 years and uh, rather than trying to look at sporadic incidents that have happened over a period of time unless you have a context on the company of that long you know if you try to judge each incidents in isolation then then you'll end up uh, you know having very different outcomes or very different opinion on the companies so you need to take a step back really look at the big picture understand and and to one more point uh, like safir bhai mentioned right that the company there is noise that the company is up for sale but, but frankly you know if a company is up for sale even that is good news because unless an asset can sell people won't talk about it being sold unless the company is good enough uh, so you know i would say that rather than trying to look too much into that as and when the business gets sold uh, i am sure that it will not get sold at a discount to the you know to mul- mul- earnings multiples it is trading today it should get a reasonable premium so there is no risk for me that someone else from the buys it it's a good business i'm sure it should it will have its buyers so rather than worrying about what can happen on corporate action side or what news is coming every day every month you know we should just focus on what the management is doing how they are executing and what are the outcomes No, I yes, just sir. wanted to chip in. I just wanted to yes, chip in. Yes, sure, sir. Sir uh, shared a very good view, and I totally endorse the fact that if the company sells, it can't be at this valuation for sure. It'll that itself will be a kicker, and if it doesn't, then all the uh, reasons that both of you have articulated seem to be very logical. Yeah, sure, sure. Thanks, thanks, Safi Bai, and thanks to Shah Bai. I will just would like to just add another data point um, for the. you know quote and quote granules of crap there is a there is a chemicals company and this is a this is a market leader in a specific product they are currently doing the top line which is lower than the steady state sales of granules if i add paracetamol and metformin the top two molecules together so if i add paracetamol and metformin together the sales that i get is lower than the sales of this chemical company that um, i'm talking about the price to sales of this chemical company today is about 13x it was almost 20x um, last year so that's the sort of discounting this chemical company was getting because they are leader in a certain chemical and the roc that they were making back then slightly lower roc today but let's say their steady state roc is about 35% which is a great roc so a business who is a leader um, getting you know 15 times 20 times price to sales uh, on about 1500 1600 crore of sales whereas if i look at the steady state roc of granules if i take the assets that are actually manufacturing the paracetamol and the and the metformin the roc number in a steady state is no less than 35% so that's the reason i'm trying to do a like for like comparison that um, very similar businesses they both are their leaders in their respective molecules they both are doing very similar roc one is getting at peak was getting 20x price to sales today they are about 13 14 x price to sales so i'm talking about vinity organics here atbs 65% of cash is coming from that one molecule which is also a risk in my view because i mean accidents can happen i mean there is a sudden disruption from us fda or whatever action i'm not saying that it's imminent but 
there is always a what if scenario that you know majority of the cash flow is coming from a single molecule so from that perspective now you should have you know have to uh, reconsider you know how you are valuing uh, another leader uh, from india and, and the, the modes on the paracetamol and metformin as tushar bhai explained it's unlikely to you know um, to indel or reduce any time soon plus the company is sort of investing in the right areas i mean they acquired a biotechnology company to get into this fermentation stroke um, enzymes uh, space and i think it's a step in the right direction they have started also diversifying into you know other therapeutic areas like oncology even cns now so overall i think the the the, pro- the management is is progressive and it's all there in the numbers it's just that people people don't do the hard work it's easy to you know tweet something and and say that you know this company is not good because um, it's a very high roc na koi investment nahi laga tweet kar diya but it, it takes a lot of time and patience to go through the numbers that are not so obvious so that's that's something that i wanted to add as well but yeah yes. otherwise i think we have covered it there's just one more point uh, uh, you know just sticking specifically on this company and the incidents about the uh, tampering of the uh, uh, you know the tra- concord transcript now uh, a lot of people who have actually leveled this allegations were prince and actually they were not even present on the call let alone present as a participant who had asked the the specific questions and you know what was said and how it was said i was one of the speakers on the call uh, i had asked multiple questions i had in fact uh, uh, put a uh, you know uh, actually uh, challenge the uh, the management in terms uh, on the call in terms of that uh, whether they are you know what they are saying and uh, what they intend to achieve probably they are being too conservative i had actually uh, said this to them on the call that they are, they are probably being too conservative or something on those lines and multiple participants had actually uh, queries around the ebitda margin or uh, what they can achieve and uh, clearly uh, you know uh, the the management had not thought through that point as as clearly or, or they wanted to be conservative and they were caught in a situation where uh, where people uh, you know think they are not not really uh, given thought on the point so uh, you know maybe it, it was a you know uh, an over zealous attempt to correct things or or to Uh, and they had in fact come on media as well as, and said that uh, they would like to uh, you know sort of correct that that point uh, on the in, about the con call uh, on the margin guidance so it was uh, it was uh, sort of a, you know see you, then that's the beauty that's also one reason why i really like uh, reading con calls more than annual reports a thread of con calls because con calls are done in run time in it's it's live what you see is is live and uh, you know you are not often thinking through it and uh, that is where some of the best responses come across and so this is something that probably happened it was an incident even the transcript entry it was not intended to cheat or misguide you know it was an attempt to actually correct what they thought was maybe a conservative guidance and which they com- come on media and said also that probably our guidance was too conservative and it, it was a wrong thing absolutely it was a it was a mistake but it was just a mistake you know trying to vilify the management for what was a genuine mistake is like you know you not even attended to call you don't even know what really happened but since you got an opportunity to vilify someone and in the process uh, increase your own uh, viewership or you know uh, followers that is what people do and and uh, if we don't know whom to follow and what opinions to really uh, uh, read into then we end up being uh, we will end up uh, forming our opinion on the, on wrong uh, inputs so i would say uh, you know if anyone is following this company you should just erase that thought process from your mind that the management intended to cheat or that it was uh, you know a, a very grave mistake it was a, a a genuine error these kind of things happen we are humans but it is important to put that point in context it was definitely no intention of the management to cheat i know this because i was one of the participants asking them the questions and uh, i know the specific questions being asked at that point and what happened all right prashar so sajal sir yesterday you had a tweet on china api king versus an indian competitor uh, competitor who is growing significantly between 90s and 2022 so 
yeah so that is that is what we have discussed exactly exactly granules they started right. with api right if you go back to their so that's what i say you need to go back to the history of the business they started as a pure play api company uh, back in 90s you go through those you know 1998 99 so they've been listed since about 1995 so you you see i mean and and china was the undisputed leader and there has they have created a serious blood bath in the api industry so why mai bolta hu ki despite this china blood bath over the last 20 25 years whosoever has survived will you know will now kill china kyunki boy na ghayal sher ko kabhi chhodna nahi chahiye abhi india ki 10 15 companies in unlisted we also so hetero and msn you know those likes of those so perception is that you know china is the is the undisputed and they have done you know the dumping and they got unfair you know um, uh, low interest rates uh, you know subsidized power land infrastructure that is all correct and even with that if indian companies are giving you know 100 baggers in terms of cash flow sales etc there there has to be an inherent economic moat in the business thank you right so sir we have one question from sahir he is asking how do you evaluate micro caps in pharma and their ability to scale and what do you look for in management and other aspects specifically their ability to scale the company right so <laughs> that's a that's a great question i think um, there is there is unfortunately no um, sort of set template um, for you know screening any business Uh, and if you're talking about micro caps, I I assume that you are talking about sub 500 crore market cap, where you know most of the time there will not be any sort of earnings call. Um, there will not be any sort of presentation. The annual report will be too dry. Not much information being revealed, etc., etc. So, I mean, I think for a micro cap, in most cases you will not get you know a a. a a nice looking operating cash flow the balance sheet may be debt free and that's that's where you have to start so one of my key framework is uh, narratives must match numbers and numbers much ma- must match narrative they both have to be joined at the hip if there is a narrative and there is no number i'm not interested and if there is a number and no narrative then also i'm not interested they have to match first of all now in case of a micro cap there is there is nothing to be excited about so the only thing that i look for and that's the only thing is the management because i i need to get you know it's it's all about jockey the, the, the horse is too too weak today um but it's all about the 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 jockey so wipro at one point in time was an oil company a micro cap um, you know um, and then you know how the transformation happened uh loras i mean when it was not listed it was you know sort of a micro cap and pure play rv api company so it's all about the the management or the promoter or the person in charge so you need and you need you need lot of experience um to and you know there there will be several um, different data points maybe i can i can take some examples um, where i can you know just try and explain so i look for of course the competence the honesty and the growth hunger and you know whether they are walking the talk in the annual report so so maybe one of my recent examples if i could take um, let's take uh, the example of um, max india so i i i tweeted about uh, max india recently and uh, and you know i i said ki um, this will There's a there's a possibility that they can grow significantly over the next um, 10, 15 years, um, and this is something that I have started uh, looking at very recently. So, what I was looking for is a micro cap, 400, 500 crore market cap company. I was looking at the group. So, the group has been a pioneer in healthcare services over the last you know few decades. So, the promoter pedigree was um, almost assured. Uh, market cap was uh, sub 400 or or close to 400 and against that market cap of 400 crore um, they were sitting on assets of close to 500 crore so 500 crore of assets on books against a market cap of 400 crore and again 
remember my disclaimer up front right so this is not a this is not a stock recommendation by any stretch of imagination the company is loss making today and i don't know if they will be profitable or when they will be profitable but i'm just sharing my thought process so foreign crore market cap 500 crore assets on books of those 500 400 crore is in cash and cash equivalents so so you are getting that business for free and i was i was surprised when i looked uh, at the the presentation and the earnings calls the level of integrity and the disclosures i mean that was the group's uh, pedigree and and i'll give you you know few more points that i looked at um, and i was really impressed by max india again it's a, it's a it's a healthcare services business they've got two broad divisions right there's senior living uh and then there is like um, assisted care which is which is the one that i'm more interested in because senior living is more like you know a, a real estate type of business although it's asset light um, now but i'm the one the division that i'm more interested in the assisted living where you know they provide services like um, care homes and care at home uh, med- medical equipment uh, on rent or uh, you know you can you can buy them as well uh so overall it's a structural business it should you know grow as the the population is growing and the population is aging so all those tailwinds the structural tailwinds were present the 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 management disclosures were uh, were great and they they also took a you know charge on the the balance sheet they accepted the mistake that you know they went into the dehradun project which was their first um, senior living project they owned the land and everything and they took a write off in the balance sheet a large write off which i always appreciate when you know a management is you know candid enough to accept uh, the mistake and i really appreciated that so the the balance sheet is a lot leaner today after that write off the, the promoters um, are giving um, esop to the uh, to the management at i think about 76 75 odd levels where the stock is today so the the minority interests are aligned with the the management and the promoter and also there is a there is a buyback the the record it has already passed so even if you um, buy this stock you cannot participate in that but what i'm trying to highlight is that the buyback price was predetermined um Uh, and they were just waiting for the nclt order to execute that and they very swiftly executed that as soon as they got the nclt approval so again i'm just trying to um, give you enough of hints around you know how to how to analyze the management because in micro cap this is an exception they are doing earnings call and they are doing presentations you will not get this in majority of micro caps so you have to you know bring all your experience um into the game and then analyze you know what's your take on the management and that's the only thing you need to worry about because if the management is competent if the management is growth hungry and the management has got you know um, um, ethics um, and is trustworthy the numbers will follow numbers will 100% follow Uh, i i can maybe give you another example there was a company uh, of sub 100 crore market cap and, and they were reporting erratic margins sometimes going into losses sometimes you know um, thin margins profitability etc but what i liked about that that despite being such a small company market cap wise they were doing 300 400 crore of sales even then the market cap was below 100 um, there was a very strong promoter pedigree uh, and it it was sort of um, partly owned by you know a large global mnc um, i'm talking about nitta jetin here again disclaimer none of this is um, is a is a recommendation this stock has been you know surging ahead and it's definitely in momentum so if you buy that you know very likely you will be sitting on losses a year later but i'm just trying to give you you know some more anecdotal and and data based evidence rather that you know how you analyze the management so when i was looking at nitta many years back one thing that came to my mind in addition to the the technology advantage that they had due to this um, nitta group of japan being you know present um, as a shareholder as a promoter as a joint promoter uh, part of the stake is with you know this state government and and, and so the governance was kind of taken care of uh, there is a strong tailwind in nutraceuticals where you know um, they have got you know a sort of an ancillary low role to play in nutraceuticals the the biggest thing that um, uh, struck me was 
the promoter stake was above 75%. It used to be 78, 79%. And then there was this rule that, you know, promoters cannot hold more than 75%. So they engineered a very uh, minority uh, friendly um, uh, solution to bring their stake down to 75%. They decided to issue the bonus. Now, if you issue the bonus, the promoters also get the bonus and there is no change in the shareholding pattern. So, they decided that promoters will not be getting this bonus. Only the minority shareholders will be getting the bonus in the ratio of one bonus share for every three years. This was many years back. And that was it. You, you getting a 300 crore sales company at then market cap of less than 100 crore with, you know, this MNC technology, MNC shareholding, um, corporate governance, etc, etc. And there were few issues going on, you know, back then they were not getting the compliance approval for one of their plants um, in Gujarat. Um, uh, so all sorts of challenges the business was facing. And that was the reason the market cap was um, where it was. Um, but, you know, that thing that, you know, giving bonus to the minority shareholder, I mean, I've not seen this uh, happening in, in, in India, um, uh, even, I mean, even with the larger groups. So, so that was, that was another example. And, and I mean, likewise, I mean, I can, I can go on and on DMCC as another, another example. Again, remember the disclaimer, very, very small company three years ago, but I could join their maiden earnings call and I got a decent handle on the management, I followed it up with regular updates via the earnings calls and annual reports and and that's that's what I that's what I usually do. I look for promoter. Nothing nothing but the promoter or the management. Maybe I think um, we should um, also let some others uh, if you've got any view to share by how do you how do you analyze a, a very small company? I mean what's your sort of framework? If I could just um, right. throw the same question over to you. Yeah, uh, so uh, so you already covered a very comprehensive answer, but just uh, from an approach perspective, uh, Sajan Rai, so uh, see, one of, uh, pharma in general is perceived to be a very complex domain, you know, let alone uh, it, it evaluating uh, micro caps or small caps, but, uh, you know, even larger companies, a lot of people are uncomfortable with evaluating pharma as a domain. Uh, because of the uh, inherent complexities involved. Uh, so then, then you compound that with uh, the point that, you know, for smaller companies, there's less data available in terms of uh, management views, in terms of, you know, history of uh, con calls, etc. And plus the numbers, uh, when a business is small and growing, the numbers will obviously not necessarily reflect the long-term, uh, you know, inherent characteristic. The, they, will be, they will be very different from what the business can achieve in stable state. So in this case, what I try to do, uh, and this applies to all uh, sectors, but you look at, uh, A, uh, first you have to understand the, the broad theme and where the company is in that broad theme. You know? so, so, pharma itself can be broken down further into multiple sub-segments, right? Hospital is a very different beast. Diagnostics is a very different uh, uh, segment. Uh, then within pharma, you have APIs and CRAMs are very different segments. Formulations, generics, formulations again, regulated markets, semi regulated. So, A, first you understand which is the competitive field where the company is operating in. Where, what is the segment they are really belo they belong to. Uh, and then you try to analyze their numbers and more importantly their commentary uh, and, you know, uh, and, the, uh, and the overall uh, way the business is being built. You try to evaluate that in the context of the segment they are operating in. And then you try to see whether their numbers are, uh, you know, uh, can you relate to their numbers vis-a-vis -vis what the leaders in that segment are doing or what their peers in that segment are doing, right? And then you look for points of similarity and points of differentiation. Points of similarity to get comfort that the company is, uh, is going as per the template of that domain. And points of differentiation to catch either, uh, you know, from a forensic perspective, catch uh, uh, negatives or to identify what is the right to win, why the company is doing what they do better than others. One such example could be a leadership in a molecule. You know, so if, if, if a very small company is leader in, in a particular molecule, so let's say they have 20, 30, 40 percent global market share, then that becomes a very interesting thing for you to look at. They, they are definitely doing something right, which is allowing them to get leadership in a molecule. Then when you look for 
whether this is an isolated thing, whether they got lucky because of some particular reason or whether that is a template that they can repeat with other molecules. What has gone behind that? Uh, the the second thing is that you know let's say is they are operating uh, if a company is operating in a business where margin profile even for leaders is bad in a particular uh, uh, time frame but this company is doing much better margins then then you need to really evaluate why they are being able to do it one reason could be that you know so let's say us generics uh, for a sun pharma or for a lupin because of the sheer size and scale at which, which they are growth may be a challenge but a very small company if it's operating in that space uh, then uh, if they are being able to grow it could actually be you know genuine uh, numbers also it could be maybe they have a good product pipeline and a very small base so they are being able to grow or it could also be a red flag then the other thing is that uh, you know i look at uh, uh, you know things which which uh, which are domain specific to the domain like let's say regulators approval uh, if, if a company is us fda regulated that means that there is a certain minimum benchmark that is being established and this is very important uh, for micro caps and the, some of the smaller cap companies that uh, you know so if you have an fda regulation for example that you know that the business is regulated by one of the toughest regulators in the world and uh, so therefore uh, it can't be a total fraud the business needs to will have certain minimum characteristics uh, that that it is representing Uh, if if a company is building, uh, let's say, uh, a respiratory portfolio in domestic, then uh, then you look at whether it's a one product that they are doing or that they have a basket of products. If they have a basket of products, it means they have a clear strength in a particular area. Then you look at whether they have a right to you know be can they build a business in domestic. If yes, then if you know it's a let's say fifty crore revenue company, you know that uh, over a period of time this fifty will end up being hundred and then one fifty and then two hundred. Maybe the growth will be very fast or or more moderate. You know you can't predict that, but you think that the company has got all the ingredients to grow. So uh, I I would look at basically you know uh, so just to highlight there are you try to understand what where the company is operating in, how they are doing visa with their entire uh, uh, the landscape, uh, what are the areas where they have a clear right to win. What are areas where their numbers look debatable compared to the broader universe, and where you can draw comfort from specific points in that sector, from a domain perspective? Uh, right, Sahir Rani, quick uh, follow-up question, or you raised hand in between, or uh, we are done with your. Oh uh, yeah, or... just just a quick follow-up. Uh, thank you, thank you, Prince, for doing this. Thank you, Sajal G, and uh, thank you, Tushar, for your comprehensive answers. Sajul ji, one more quick question. Uh, based on what you focused on, you uh, specified promoters and promoter integrity a lot. But um, do you look at, uh, say, a solid promoter group having similar expertise in a similar field as a big advantage? As well as, suppose it's not a specific promoter group that's known, but if the promoter is a very smart techno technocrat, uh, do you think these are also uh, Advantages and things to look forward to with the company scaling. Yeah, absolutely, sir. I mean, it's all about the promoter's vision. So, I mean, cast your mind back twenty-five years when Sinjin, you know, took birth inside mother's womb. So it was all Kiran's uh, and the management team's vision that you know India is is in the right place to start offering you know these um, CRO services. Um, To to Western companies, more like you know the IT services model where the scientists or the engineers are getting billed. Um, so it's kind of a cash positive business from day one. Hing lagya na fit kari rang chokha, right? So you you have to you have to you know see uh, you know what their what their history is, what they have done in their so again Max India example. There are many large groups um, today, you know. Where they have got you know direct or um, uh, controlling stake in some of these micro caps, very small businesses, they are either not making um, profits because you know the assets are not fully um, utilized today, or they are still in losses because you know they um, the they they are setting up the infrastructure or the the process or you know. Um, waiting for approvals etc but if there is a an a listed company where you know it's a large promoter you have seen them over the last 20 years or so 
you know you know the their style of operating you know their their style of governance so on and so forth that gives you a lot of comfort to initiate with a very small tracking position or you even even that is not required as long as you can have it uh, you know a, a watch list which you can you know just watch very closely and whenever you know the smaller business starts um, performing showing you know these cash flows and um, you know uh, the return ratios improving then then you can just go in and you know take whatever is you know 4% 5% 6% whatever is your comfort level in that business so that way you know there is no opportunity loss um, uh, but you you were kind of tracking that business from the sidelines and you jumped in so you would have to do, you know track this this kind type of a business very closely because the re-rating usually is very sudden as soon as the market you know will get one quarter market will extrapolate it in a jiffy so one quarter of a strong operating turn around and the stock would double in no time so you have to be really nimble footed and and agile uh, with with those kind of micro caps because remember they there usually be no float if that answers your question yes yes thank you thank you so much thank you panel so ankit uh, you can ask your question yeah hi uh, thank you prince for uh, arranging this and thank you for allowing me the question and i'm a big follower and ardent fan of uh, all three sapri sir sajal sir and tushar bhai so i've been more close to tushar bhai over the last few years so this this is one thing which uh, uh, i always had in mind as in uh, i have no shame in admitting that uh, i'm a novice when it comes to pharma sector so i think uh, just like me many uh, i think more than 1400 people on the call would be uh, interested to know as to there are different types of businesses in the pharma sector uh there are businesses where the management is uh, top notch but then you get the valuation of those companies are pretty high and then there are like we have discussed about one company today at the start where the business is really good but uh, there has been some questions or doubt in in the in terms of the management uh, uh, quality and then there will be so many other businesses where probably the management quality is average but they continue to do well year on year in terms of businesses so how would you rate i would uh, it would be lovely to listen to all three of you how would you rate these different types of businesses in the farm sector because i personally feel for any any investor any average investor uh, a layman uh, generally what happens is that since the we generally farm farm has a very complex business we we tend to side with the management where we think that okay management will not do well but probably we miss on the opportunity uh, of creating more wealth by finding out those companies where uh, probably the management is not wrong but the perception of the management is not so great and you find the stocks at a much uh, cheaper valuation so that's my only question and it would be lovely to hear from all three of you thank you to shabai you go you go first this time right uh so uh, ankit i think it's to some extent an extension of the previous question i, I think the philosophy uh, whether it's a micro cap or a larger company you know the the philosophy uh, to a large extent remains the same see uh, you know uh, we have to understand uh, and differentiate between uh, in investments uh, made to grow the business uh, challenges that the business is facing and uh, issues that that are specific to certain managements or certain companies you know and uh, i will be very careful i will not try to name specific companies here but so just uh, just as a pocket if you see you know the, the top seven companies uh, top seven eight uh, formulations uh, us just one sec the top seven eight uh, you know formulations companies Have had a significant investment uh, phase in the last, uh, say, uh, eight ten years. Sometime beginning 2013-14, and uh, you know, really gain, gaining intensity from 2017-18 onwards. Uh, these leaders have invested substantial money in trying to build the uh, specialty and complex index business, 
as well as uh, grow the non us piece because uh, they were facing challenges in the us generic piece but if you uh, were to actually you know take a step back and look at what each company has done how have they invested where have they invested what kind of money has gone in and what kind of outcomes have been achieved you will find a very very different trend for certain companies vis a vis the others some companies have done substantially better on their investments and on their overall ability to scale up and move to the next level and some other companies have actually disappointed uh, or or not been able to achieve now this could be a uh, a case of uh, management focus it could be a case of management's inability to scale up uh, despite best intentions it could be a case of intention also but irrespective of what it is if if we understand that a particular sector or an area is for facing uh, issues then we can always focus on other areas which are supposed to be doing better and uh, you know uh, we need not invest necessarily uh, in an area at a time when you think that money will not be there the other thing is that you have to also understand that there is no company that will get everything right 100% of the time all the time the companies will make mistakes businesses will face issues you have to see where uh, they have overcome these issues i'll give two specific examples from the past here now uh, in the last 7 8 years regulatory challenges have emerged as one of the biggest bail in pharma you know multiple companies uh, have faced and continue to face regulatory issues but i'll give you two specific examples of companies where uh, this has not been a a barrier to value creation one of them is dvs where they had a very clear issue regulatory issue uh, they one of their key plants uh, underwent import alert and uh, the company was actually able to get the issue resolved in less than one year that till date remains uh, i think one of the fastest that any indian company possibly even on, on a global scale there is a very good example of a company resolving a crisis situation in, in a very very uh, short span of time and actually emerging much stronger uh, in their business uh, post that uh, the second example i would take is of ipca ipca also faced uh, fda related issues in 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 multiple facilities and uh, you know uh, there was a time when basically uh, this got coupled also with the uh, with the issues in the tender business where they were facing pressures and uh, you know the company looked down and out and a lot of people would have given up faith on them but if you just look at how the company has done in the last 5 years despite issues to two of their main uh, mainstay businesses at the starting of that period how and, and how the stock is done so despite there being challenges in uh, regulatory challenges and a difficult phase the company actually emerged much stronger and they have done fantastic in their domestic business and the stock has been one of the uh, you know it has been a very very good wealth creator uh, for investors who were patient and who understood uh, and stood by the management so uh, the learning that we have is that uh, you know you bet on the management at least i would take a, a, a very focused effort to look at the management as closely as the company itself because eventually uh, a good management will be able to steer a company even out of bad times and a bad management will never will steer a good company also into Uh, a bad phase at some point or the other so uh, and i don't go by good and bad by what is available in public domain or social media right as we build our own data points we uh, where possible we you know we look at companies with a 8 10 15 year horizon we continue to interact with or track the management's uh, you know or guidance vis a vis what they actually delivered over many many years we don't necessarily have to invest in a company the first moment we Uh, read about it some uh, the companies have been invested you know 3 4 maybe 5 years after we first uh, met the management of we first started to do work uh, we we really st- or, or we took small positions and we iteratively built a larger position once we got really comfort on the execution so i uh, place a lot of emphasis on uh, you know whether the management is a very clear thinking whether the management can be trusted that if they create wealth they will del- uh, give that deliver that wealth to the shareholders and that their heart and uh, mind are in the right direction and uh, if things go wrong they have the capability to de- bring them out so this is something that i place a lot of emphasis so i don't know if it answers the question but uh, 
as a philosophy there is uh, you know there is no good or bad company effectively uh, you know each company evolves over a period of time over over a number of decisions it is eventually the people who take those decisions the promoters and the senior management so you have to really understand and evaluate those decisions over a, a frame of time rather than looking at it as an isolated event right so we can start you can answer the question ankit do yeah 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 right yeah thank you thank you so much kishan yeah sure i mean i can just pick up from where dushabhai left and just add to that so i mean couple of days back i tweeted and i and i have been very vocal about this culture of compliance or what i call jugaad so if you just search on my Twitter handle with the with the keyword jugar. <laughs> you will find you know few few tweets where you know I might be mocking some of these managements uh, because it's been really frustrating. So I mean, couple of days back I tweeted and I quote that any book of stock recommendations on pharma has to start with a preference on US FD and the audit linked uh, uncertainty. The index table of that book should have at least three hundred odd references to the regulatory compliance and the. and the importance of compliance and the role of management failing to enforce compliance i repeat the role of management in failing to enforce compliance and in india we have got you know lots of examples where these companies are predominantly in us generics um, you know anda those um, chemically synthesized small molecules and and they are unable to you know um, get their acts together and some of them are dreaming to you know get into the biologics or biosimilars world i mean just to you know give you guys some sort of um, <laughs> comparison benchmark a, a small molecule will have you know far fewer atoms and complexity compared to you know a biologic like a monoclonal antibody let's say a trastuzumab as an example so aspirin is a small molecule with just 21 atoms and uh, monoclonal antibody will have you know somewhere in the region of 25000 atoms so 21 versus 25000 now you may argue that aspirin is a very you know um, really really small molecule but even if you take you know some of the more challenging small molecules you will not get anywhere closer to that level of complexity of a of a monoclonal antibody and if you look at you know how many players in india have actually gone into the us market with that level of complexity that will you know tell you something so i mean there are many managements in india large large caps who are you know really wrestling uh, with us fda and us fda keeps uh, you know slapping them uh, almost every year sometimes you know twice a year and and they are is still you know into this chemical anda game which is much lower complexity and i mean how they can you know progress into the next level because ultimately the world is shifting towards biologics <laughs> ultimately that's that shift is happening it's very clear in if you look at the the pipeline of the clinical trials uh, that's where the puck is going and if you are struggling with a much lower level of complexity you would definitely struggle with you know a complexity which is hundreds of times more than what you are currently unable to um, uh, to grapple with so uh, regulatory compliance i think is is the first um, sort of um, check uh, and that's the reason some of the companies are really like have got you know a immaculate um, clean us fda track record uh, and not just us fda even the japanese regulator and to my mind the the pmda of japan is much more stringent than us fda i mean japanese they they are very particular about you know if you they takes supplies or you know if there is an innovator sitting in japan um, let's say takida as an example they will make sure that the it's not just unit 1 or unit 2 or unit 5 or unit 7 they will say is unit ka in this block using reactor number 13 that's the level of precision they want the supplier to commit to and that supplier can not change the reactor from thir- number 13 to number 12 or number 14 let alone you know switching between blocks um, or or the you know the the unit all together so these regulators are super stringent these customers who these um, indian um, 
specialty players are supplying to they are very stringent and if you can do this you know year after year successfully uh, then i think you know it's just a matter of time where you know you, the numbers will start scaling up and the the music will start if that if that answers your question uh, ankit yeah thank you so much uh, just a follow up if i may uh, uh, sure so if i got you correctly does that mean that uh, uh, if you are looking for uh, in terms of uh, the regulatory hurdles if the companies have shown a good history or not so that means that uh, compared to other industries in the stock market uh, for pharma you should be far more vigilant and uh, careful when you are looking at a small cap or a micro cap because in that uh, in in case of pharma probably uh, there is a lesser odds of those small companies being able to uh, be so compliant specifically when you are looking at the history of india ankit i think it's the other way around you should be you oh. should be more careful dealing with large caps because majority of the us fda issues are with large caps if you do if okay. you do <laughs> yeah the majority of them are are large or mid none of the smaller players i'm talking about sub 5000 crore market cap here obviously M- most of them i mean if you if you do you know how many are clean and how many are not clean from usfd perspective is of is how many large ones are clean and not clean there are hardly very few um every other including even cipla has got you know one or two warnings uh, from usfd so all of them i think i think it's it's not about the size of the company itself is about you know the the security of the cash flow and you know how fast the cash flows can grow and if you are if you keep getting disrupted a you are selling a commodity if you miss the narrow window of opportunity to you know uh, mint money on the back of that launch then that a and da will get rotten so that's money down the drain so you are always on this r and d treadmill you keep you keep filing andas then you keep getting slapped from usfda and those anda filings the effort the scientific intensity the filings everything is down the drain you start all over again you get back on the treadmill so i i don't like these businesses to be honest with you i i, I mean i don't like you know any business where majority of cash is coming from us generis because that's a pure commodity in my view uh i just like to add a few points uh, to, to you know what sajil bhai said uh, ankit actually uh, you know uh, again uh, rather than looking at the size you have to look at where the organization is present uh, so what i mean is uh, if you see injectable blocks right uh, 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 companies that are in that, that are present uh, into injectables uh, the issues with regulators have been higher because the level of regulatory compliance uh, required Uh, you know, is much more. You know, the regulators far stricter when it comes to uh, injectable products, uh, and for so, for very clear reasons. Uh, so, so you you know, you so you have to look at oral solids vis a vis injectables. How the compliance is. Second, uh, you have to also look at uh, you know uh, API versus formulations. Uh, you know, typically uh, the regulator regulatory overreach has been much more on the formulation side as compared to the API side. third i think uh, from if you look at from a crams business perspective this is via a normal uh, manufacturing uh, uh, you know when, when you are manufacturing your own product uh, you know typically uh, if you are fda regulated you, you know you would get inspected on average in about 2 years once in 2 years and between all the auditors there would be one inspection happening maybe on an average 3 to 4 months but if you are in crams uh, you know you dealing with multiple clients each client has their own audit the plants tend to get audited much more frequently so you know you, so it's like you know if there are two students just to take an example if there are two students one who gives uh, you know uh, an exam just once or twice a year and the other one who gives a sort of an exam once every week the second student will a always be better prepared b never have a uh, sort of a you know surprise check or surprise exam coming up because You know, he is always in a continuous exam mode. Uh, it's like uh, you know, if you clean your house daily, uh, your your annual Diwali clean cleaning will not really throw up anything material. 
But if you clean your house only uh, once every few months, then definitely when when you do it, that comprehensive cleaning, there are likely to be cobwebs that will come up. So you know a lot of things go, and then there is one more point you need to understand. Businesses have become far more robust in dealing with regulatory issues, and uh, you know, so it's like if you are in an earthquake prone area, and at the first time an earthquake happens, you would feel devastated. You know, uh, you you not to where to start and rebuild the uh, the home. But if you uh, if you if when the first time an earthquake happens, but if you are in an earthquake prone area, and, and you you are expecting one any time all the time, then your uh, your your ability to deal with it also changes. You build in systems and processes in place that are far more robust, and and you know you you want your ability to deal with those challenges is is very different. If you see. Uh, so that's where I slightly disagree with Sajid. Right? I think uh, some of uh, these uh, larger companies definitely they have challenges in on the manufacturing side with regulators. But uh, when you have a large number of facilities and when you are uh, you know when you have a very very large business in US and uh, the regulator clearly is looking at you setting much higher benchmarks. And plus, a lot of these companies are also getting into more complex spaces and. Uh, also, uh, you know, sort of on the innovation path, the regulator expects them to set much higher standards. Plus, uh, any person who deals with compliance, like Sajil, by obviously will be able to add more on this. But the regulatory requirements are not static, and they are not cast in stone. What is true today will not be true in six months' time, and definitely not in three years. So it's not that the companies had to just get this right once, and they have not even got that. The regulatory requirements are also moving with time. It's a constantly changing. It's a dynamic situation, and therefore, it is difficult for companies to keep up to it a lot of times. Having said that, there is also an organizational culture thing. Uh, some companies, therefore, are more prone to regulatory mishaps than others, and that is something that, as an investor, uh, you know, if you observe the trends over the last many years, you would be able to pick that point up. That few companies have had. Much uh, more issues than others. So, like where uh, a DV has got, uh, uh, you know, one of their plants resolved in less than one year. Wokhart has had multiple uh, plants uh, with, you know, regulatory challenges which have still not got resolved over last eight nine years. So, that that kind of thing, uh, you know, you are able to pick up uh, when you look at it closely. Sanjeev, you want to add to that? No, no, absolutely. Uh, you bang on, and uh, I completely agree. And that's that's the reason. I mean, my money is where my mouth is, and I don't um, like any of these um, formulate uh, formulations sort of play. And and I think formulations in general is a very competitive, you know, cutthroat uh, business. So, I mean, that's what I mean. That's the reason I like companies like Divi's who are pure play. You're not you're not competing with your customer. You are just collaborating with them. and it's you know the, the the whole pharmaceutical world today and going forward is all about collaboration the best discoveries the best molecules will be coming out of collaboration and not competition um so and majority of these um, indian companies they started as a pure play api but you know just to get into this i don't know if greed is the right word or whatever they they wanted to grow bigger and faster and they started you know venturing out into formulations where when you use your api you are selling the same api to your uh, customer and then you are using the same api to make that tablet or a capsule uh, or whatever and you are um, competing with the same customer who you are selling the api in the same market so that is that is that is unethical and maybe customers you know they would prefer sourcing from someone who is not their competitor and that's where i think you know going forward i see lot of uh, um, benefits flowing naturally flowing into these pure play api players uh, and and pure play uh, custom synthesis uh, players who are not into you know this game of competing with their own customers Uh, right sir uh, aditya sir we have one pointed question for you uh, charanjeev singh has asked about the in respect of medical tourism potential jc jci certificate hospital have an edge uh, 
how difficult is to get jci certificate because in listed space we all we have jci and nabh accredited hospital so you wanted your views on this yeah sure uh, thanks for having me and hi sachal hi tushar hi prince uh, so on the question i think uh, hospitals uh, per se are a uh, you know great business nabh certification in itself uh, gives a lot of confidence to most of the patients and doctors that the quality standards have been upheld but he is right that a jci and it's not jcl i think is jci joint Com commission competition thing uh, so jci accreditations are also uh, much more stringent than the nabh so there may be some patients who may be coming from let's say developed markets or markets which are more advanced in medical uh, you know uh, medical treatments and if they wanted to sort of shortlist a hospital they may look for a jci sort of a certification however a majority of our medical tourism actually happens from countries like uh, dubai africa countries which are nearby you know uh, i mean we get some people from europe and all that also but uh, majority of it is uh, actually uh, closer by markets where uh, i don't see patients asking necessarily for jci uh, mm -hmm. but some patients do so yes does it give it a given edge yes is it very stringent yes uh, how many facilities can get it in india we'll see over a period of time as of now very few facilities have it it's simply because it's a bit of an expensive affair 